kill my email so it doesn't <coughs> blow us up. Yeah, I've got a little cough that's residual from my COVID infection right after Christmas. So, but I'll survive. So, all right, there we go. All right, well, guys, welcome uh, to our, our our first Thursday night live. You know, this is something we kind of talked with our admins about um, doing, just kind of keep some some activity on the page. You know, obviously, we know all about the different sales, which are hoping to have our <laughs> first cantina sale of the new year next Thursday, because Thursday night is kind of our placeholder for right now. Uh, so we're going to be hitting that. Um, but our goal with our Thursday night live is just to catch up, hang out, and then talk, uh, you know, whatever uh, media is out there. You know, obviously, Book of Boba Fett's at the forefront right now. So that'll be a focus of our discussion. we got a little catch up to do. I got three uh, episodes to hit and you know i know sometimes we get in here we kind of get loosey-goosey get all crazy and we chase all kinds of rabbits we'll definitely do that but uh, as jay kind of teases me i'm the guy that always brings agenda to the party so i've got an agenda <laughs> so we'll try to keep us on track the best we can uh but yeah we're going to talk about that we're going to talk about um you know the fact is those that got in on the Haslab, <coughs> excuse me razor crest got notification from hasbro uh, that uh, they're going to be shipping soon. Wanted you to update your, your address just in case because you don't want it shipped to your old address. We know how that kind of stuff works here in the cantina. Well, we've had some some fiascos trying to track packages down and stuff and definitely don't want that razor crest going somewhere else. Uh, so we'll talk about that. Uh, we'll talk about some, uh, oh, you know, here's the big title bout. And I'm interested to hear your insight. I've done some backup, some uh, background reading because uh, I wasn't familiar with them, but Chewbacca versus uh, Black uh, Chrysanthemum, or however you say his name. So we're going to see how that plays out according to y'all's thoughts. And then we'll just see where we go. So ought to be a fun night uh, just hanging out here in the cantina and shooting the breeze. So <laughs> Manuel's already claiming, I love the new Wookiee. That's right. Uh, so, all right. Well, let's, let's start the night with Book of Boba Fett. I think that's the, you know, what's a lot of us are thinking about. Many of us are star wars fans or most of us and then you know we dabble in other things as well as gi joe and transformers and marvel legends and all kinds of stuff that's one of the great things about the cantina but what do you think let's let's break it down episode by episode okay uh, I, I do want to say this first all right and maybe i might get a little hate for this or rotten tomato or whatever um i really like like where they're going i like the big picture and everything i know some guys are you know, they're bemoaning everything on the internet after every episode. But I mean, it's a whole story. They got to tell chapter by chapter. So you got to wait to the end. Then you can make that final evaluation. Now, there's nothing wrong with, you know, looking at some things in certain episodes and going, OK, that one just did not land well. And I'm sure there'll be some comments and thoughts like that uh, as we kind of work through this. But uh, yeah, I've, I've enjoyed it. Um, you know, I look forward to seeing where it's headed. You know, I think there's some certain things they're laying the groundwork for. I mean, granted, it's all, um, <coughs> excuse me, just throwing ideas out there. It's probably go a totally different direction. What's up, Thor? Hanging out, man. Um, so um, all our family is all positive. Oh, man. Everybody's getting the Omicron version, man. Um, but um, yeah, so let's let's talk Book of Boba Fett. Uh, what does it say? Shaz has got some comments here. You say, listen to the story we're telling. It always seems to work out. That's right, man. All the episodes, just like we do with Mando. That's right. And that's the thing. I think for many of us, Mando set the bar so high, really every episode. I mean, there was a few that, you know, people would say were filler and everything, but they were, you know, speaking nonsense because when you did see the whole thing play out, you were like, man, if that episode was gone, this piece would be missing, all those different things. So it is important to see the big picture. And uh, I've, I've enjoyed, you know, watching it all, all kind of uh, develop. So what do you guys think? What about uh, episode one? What was I it, think, a stranger in a, a strange land, I think? I think Becker might be talking about um, movie night, cantina movie night again. That's right, yeah. I mean, that's what I think he might be saying there. Yeah, we do definitely need to have a, a movie night, a marathon. We used to do that with what was that? What was that? Uh, web page, movie, something. Oh, Scener, Scener. We used to do it with Scener. Yeah, and I know Disney Plus has some different things. I don't think it could hold what you know the number of folks we could possibly get to go do it, um, and be able to do some of the other aspects of it. Yeah, but we do need to work towards a movie night again. 
or some type of marathon, you know, watch a few it was episodes. A lot of fun. It was yeah. a lot of fun. <laughs> so we'll kind of see how that goes. So all right, episode one, Stranger in a Strange Land. Is that what it was called? I think. What did you think? What what right out of the gate? I, I will tell you, for me, it took me a little bit to uh buy into the whole back to uh back to you know flashbacks. Uh, and I can't remember. Somebody said it in a real unique way, back to flashes or something like that. And uh, but uh, it took me a little while to get in that mode. You know, the back and forth thing. What What do you guys think about it? I loved it straight away. Personally, I, I love the flashbacks because I I'm not really sure why. I like the story of him. You know, for so long, the question of what happened to Boba Fett and the Sarlacc pit had had been a topic of discussion you know and just to see it that that being a part of it was really awesome how how the armor got stolen from the jawas i mean you kind of see that coming it wasn't it wasn't a real mystery of what it was going to be but the way they did it and adding the element of the tuscan raiders actually having a personality made anakin skywalker suck a lot more not <laughs> yeah. only does he kill younglings you know he kills a bunch of cool <laughs> I guess they had his mom, so yeah, that's true. That's <laughs> I, fair. Let's see what he's doing. But, you but, know, I want to go back to something you said, Jay, there, because you know, it does start out obviously he's in Sarlacc Pit, and we all wanted to see that, you know, that and they knew yeah. that they would have to start all their loading it up. Yeah, it's flash back to us. You're right, Shaz. That's it. Or back flash. Um, yeah, because they are filling in story holes in the story, but what did you think about the fact that there's and, and I, I was talking to my buddy Steve about it a little bit. I said, it took me back a, for a moment there in the Sarlacc pit. When you look over there and there's a stormtrooper. What about that? You know, I was like, I don't remember being a stormtrooper around, but. He looked old, though. Yeah, it that's looked true. Like, that it looked like um, deteriorated, you know, decayed. Yeah. Like that, that trooper had been in there for a long time. I mean, it takes a thousand years. He could have been in there yeah. for 150 he years. He was digested for several hundred years. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's right. He'd been in hanging around. <laughs> long digestion. That's what they're saying in the chat, too. <laughs> I mean, I guess if it was if it was uh, in there for a long time, it would have been a clone. But, hey, man, he might have been looking for droids early. You know what I mean? It's, hey, you're right. He could have been and the group. Stumbled off the beaten path. And... Yeah. Fall off the dewback and into the Sarlacc pit. Yeah. Yeah. I saw somebody uh, on one of the channels, uh, social media channels. Uh, yeah. Somebody said that they look, one's looking for the droid. Uh, oh, yeah. We got comments on the other side. Sorry, guys. I got to flip back and forth in our two comment places. Yeah. Um, he's got a point with the bat, bat, back to tank. Yeah. You know, so he, he's damaged from being partially digested. Yeah. You know, he's not over that. But I, I did see somebody, and I can't remember, and I bet you guys saw it too. Somebody said that, you know, how cool would it be if we get to uh, the Obi-Wan series and there's a scene where he's fighting off troopers and one of them ends up in a Sarlacc pit. <laughs> and that you, you kind of yeah, tie those cool. two together. <laughs> so, yeah. Or maybe he know. drags him down there and throws him in it because he found out about Luke. You know, he don't want yeah. that trooper to talk. Yeah, that's for sure. So probably be easier just to stab him with a lightsaber, but hey. <laughs> yeah. Here well, now and then you gotta throw a trooper in a solid. That's right. That's right. That's what I was trying to like think of in my head. It could have been a search party looking for Luke or Leia, knowing that Jabba had them or had her or something like that. And it was just uh an added bonus that a stormtrooper ended up falling in there. I'm I'm sure there's hundreds of different things in there that are slowly decaying but it just happened to be the stormtrooper this one yeah I, I think you're right on jim there a lot of folks are leaning that way it was part of that search party most likely like a lot of them are commenting now you know that we're looking for the droids you know out there and yeah, man uh, yeah. you know what's cool about david filoni and the way he writes stuff is sooner or later he'll get to that like He'll actually, he, he, I, I believe he'll show that. He, he, the way he entwines storytelling, I, I think almost rivals George Lucas. I know people may, may, may just hang up right now from me saying that, but <laughs> I, I, the guy can write Star Wars better than. Yeah, I mean, yeah, Filoni, I mean, he's, he's studied in the school of Lucas. I mean, he's basically a pattern one of Lucas. So. Yeah, it's insane. Yeah, and then, you know, put Favreau in there together. They're, they're, they're a great team. 
uh, for sure. Now, Gentlemen, did... how are we doing this evening? Hey, we're good, man. We're talking the book of Bubba Fett. How are you, Chevy? Well, I'm going to tell you right now. I uh -huh. finally did the big one, and I finally watched episodes one and two okay. last night. All right. Okay. So, hey, you can tune in, but hey, when we get to three, we're going to hit spoilers. So you may want to tune out once we get there, brother. But Well, uh, unfortunately, I can't stay on too long, but I had to at least say a little bit of a piece for you guys, just because, yeah. you know, I got to jump in. All right, do it, a man. We're talking episode one right now. What do you got? A, we all know from way back when we always heard about Boba Fett escaping the Sarlacc pit. And he either blasted his way out or did this, he did that. We always saw pictures of people thinking this is how it was look or whatever you want to call it. Still photos, comic book artists, whatever you want to call it. When you have great writers like Filoni and Favreau, who are great script writers, but are also fans of what they are writing scripts for, you you can't go wrong and right. as far as i'm concerned those two took something that was supposedly canon and now it's canon and mm -hmm. i'm going to tell you right now i screamed <laughs> like an eight-year-old watching empire strikes back when i saw that hand come out of the sand <laughs> yeah. okay. and the stormtrooper inside i was thrown for a loop only thing I could think of is maybe it was one of the ones when they were looking for 3PO. Right, yeah. And R2, that's the only thing I could think of. Um, and like, I believe it was either Jay or whoever said it, yeah, I think those two are good enough writers where we're going to find out why that trooper was in there. Because you could see that there were holes in his armor on the, the left side, and it looked like he was slowly being absorbed into the Sarlacc. Yeah, he'd been there a while. Yeah, exactly. Uh, mm -hmm. And the back to tank thing with him, you know, meditating in there and having the flashback this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Those are good. I, I, I am so into this. I love the fact, you know, and not jumping ahead to two, but I love the fact that the Tuscan Raiders are befriending him and teaching him. And, you mm -hmm. know, it just... <clears throat> I, I don't know. I mean, I was going to wait till all seven dropped and then like shotgun. I, I couldn't anymore because there was, you know, how hard it is to stay off the internet. Oh, so hard. You know, and, and not try to get spoilers. And I went, ah, we're going to, yeah, we're just going to dive right into this thing. And, you know, yeah, it's those guys bring back everybody. I mean, the mayor is, you know, uh, like a hammerhead species and of course i can't remember what it is but i, I think they're going to do phenomenal in fact like i said if you get fans of the uh, uh of the series or you know whatever you want to call it and they're writing for it they're going to knock it out of the park it's you know it's not like some big company that has a mouse says hey we're gonna buy this up and we're just gonna throw out whatever we have to and the fans weed it up i think they learned a lesson with seven eight and nine yeah they definitely did but that that's all i wanted to say i saw you guys yeah. wrong here no, i appreciate you jumping on, jumping on chevy man it's always good to hear from you but i do want us to come back to you know jay brought it up and then you brought it up too kind of moving forward in that episode because you do definitely see the tuscans in a whole new light you really do exactly yeah, it's, uh, you know, of course, we get introduced to them in, in A New Hope, you know, uh, Luke, you know, they sneak up on Luke, and uh, that's where we meet Obi-Wan for the first time, and as Jay alluded to in Attack of the Clones, you know, Anakin goes wicked on them. Um, and, you know, even in, uh, they, even in episode one, they have that, that, they're like, they almost crack you up, you know, they're just hanging out on a ridge, shooting at the pod razor. Oh, that's Why right. I forgot, shot yeah. It's just fun. He's just yeah. having fun. They're protecting They're the turf, fun, man. a fun race. You're just a part of it, you know? You want they yeah. just want to be a part of it. <laughs> and, and the other thing is the good thing is too, they're they're also sprinkling a little bit of humor into right. the episodes as well. I mean, I, I, I tell you right now, I can't get enough of Fennec. I love her. Yeah. And she's just got that wise ass, you know, 80 sidekick kind of, you know, sort of attitude about her. Um, 
The other thing that cracked me up, once again, not trying to jump ahead, but in the second episode when they're on the the spice train or whatever you want to call it, right? And the one Tuscan Raider goes down inside, pulls the one guy down, and all of a sudden, like ten seconds later, you see his head pop up. I laughed my butt off. I <laughs> thought that was hysterical. But you're, like, I love you're, that, like Ninja Tuscan. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. One, that one's awesome. That's Absolutely, absolutely. But yeah, they're bringing more characters. You know, shedding more light on characters. Let's say, I mean, yeah, like like you said, Tuscan Raiders. We just saw them being nasty scavengers in A New Hope. But I don't know. Is it are Tuscan Raiders? Are there different clans of them? Kind of like yeah, it appears so with the different you know colors. What I, you know yeah. what I mean, like different. Yeah. Like, they, they were they were explaining that in the story that there were many clans, right? They right. said that in one of the like yeah. yeah. So, which well, means guys, for like the collector, said, you've got to buy some and customize them, or wait for new figures. That's what that means. <laughs> so Hopefully, they make figures of that like chieftain guy and the ninja dude. Yeah, so, yeah, that's true. But I mean, yeah, that's a two. That's a two pack waiting to happen right there. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Uh, I love the. I love the fact that you actually learned that all the the gaffy sticks are actually hand forged, and I love yeah. seeing. Boba yeah, after the nose lizard his... takes you to wherever sticks are. It had a very it dances that. with wolves feel to it. Oh, yeah, yeah. No doubt. absolutely. Yeah, it, well, the uh, ninja dude is yeah, actually a girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. yeah, 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 like an amazing stunt woman. Yeah, I'm wondering, I, I was reading about her. It, yeah. It's crazy how awesome she is. I yeah, wonder as exactly. the story develops if she is actually I'm not and I know we'll get into three in a minute um, but I wonder if they're actually going to keep that character as a woman um, because you know in Attack of the Clones when Anakin goes in and slaughters the Tuscans uh, you know the female Tuscans look different they have they were dressed look. different yeah they're dressed it their, their yeah. mask is different yep uh, everything uh, so yep. just makes you wonder if they're actually they, keep that character they start plan too though yeah that's true you're right jim that's right just like the uh, that's a good point I, I didn't actually think about that jim i just thought that they were portraying her to be a male character yeah. but it might be a whole different clan thing mm -hmm. that's true because you didn't see yeah, any but... women in the clan at all if you know far as just the the dress as, as and there were women. little kids so there has yeah. to be right yeah, yeah it has to be they all had the yeah. same tuscan mask so. Yeah, but that, that, whole, that whole scene of him forging and making his own Gafferty stick or however you pronounce it. Yeah, it was it, that was almost like a coming of age thing. Hey, guess what? You've learned how to beat me up with this piece of tree that's like a trainer stick. So now you get to make your own. It's your time. I and I love was, like the master craftsman Tuscan didn't make it for him. You know, exactly. like they show him how to make it and then right. he has to make it. Yeah, here's your Sears Craftsman chisel. Now you have to do it this way. <laughs> but all right, guys, since you guys are going to do three, I'm going to get out of here. You guys have right, a good well, Hey, thanks for jumping in, Chevy. It's always good to see you from you, buddy. You got it, bud. So, you know, as we kind of uh, kind of circle back around and we kind of jumped into two a little bit, um, you know, with one and just those flashbacks, as you guys have been calling, which I think is right on target, uh, <clears throat> you know, we, we get a glimpse into – um, you know, his his first uh, captivity yeah, with the Tuscans, you know, trying to uh, escape with the, uh, I guess, where the Rodian, the, the, the Red Greedo. And, you know, he's sounding the alarm and all this stuff. He's got, I think one of the guys somewhere else is talking about, has he got Stockholm Syndrome or something? You know, he wants to stay there. Um, I did enjoy the part where they're, they're finding the water or the drink. Yeah, what did you think about um, that? Yeah. I, I thought it was amazing because you always wonder, I mean, it's it's a desert planet yeah and there has to be some you've never seen sources of water or anything to drink on there so you wonder is this like what everybody does or it's just what the tuscans do yeah if they figured it out maybe that's their dogs up well on. the tuscans yeah. definitely have a it seemed like have, have May, might be the only ones doing that. Everyone else is moisture farming. You know what I mean? You uh -huh. see those moisture evaporator things everywhere. So, yeah. you know, 
Yeah, well, kind of. You may not know about the eggs of water. I, where do those even come from? You know, they're not buried wicked underneath the sand, so you think you'd stumble across them. Yeah, right. Just normally, dig deep. That's for sure. So when when somebody just said, I forgot who said it, but about the dances with wolves reference, yeah. it did feel very Indian. Like the Tuscans are that's their home planet, and everybody else kind of just came there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And there's a bunch of tribes, and they obviously learned how to find water on their own they didn't have the technology to have evaporators or whatever it might be and they had to make their own way so just like american indians or indians in general around the globe any tribal people they found what they could survive on in that area so yeah it's it was really interesting just to kind of see how that all developed and how he took with that uh took up with the um the young tuscan that was kind of bullying him around there for a little while and he he's gonna hit him and he caught the stick and then i guess he kind of earned his his favor and then of course when you know the uh well, he the saved preacher, him from whatever that huge what does anyone know what that thing was with it was from uh clash of the titans man it was the kraken yeah. <laughs> it was like the kraken right <laughs> So I was waiting for Harry Hamlin to come busting through there as Perseus and Pegasus to swoop down and help out, but it just never happened. So at first I thought it was a crate dragon that was just like under the sand. And then I'm like, wait, that's not a crate dragon. Oh, if it goes along with the Mandalorian there, it's yeah. Totally- yeah, I thought for sure that's what we were gonna see, Jim. You're right on with that. So uh let's see, Shaz over in the chat, you know, has a couple of comments. He goes, Asked if that Rodian was red. You know, have we ever seen another colored Rodian other than green? I may have seen one like in the Battlefront game before, a different color. Now that I think about it, in um, the books they're different colors. Are they? Are they? Are they? yeah. Okay. So uh, like, there's a blue one and a red one in one of the books that I was listening to. Okay, but that's it's not a canon book or anything. So it's one of the older. So I, I do remember there was a blue one and a red one. Wow, I'd love to see a blue one. I bet that'd be cool. But yeah, we definitely see a red one. Shaz also said those water pods could be some form of remnant from when it was covered in water. You know, like, yeah, because we do hear a couple of, you know, as we look over the three episodes, we get at least two or three references to it once being, you know, all underwater, basically a water planet, or, or at least having great seas. Yeah. Said so, the seas dried up. Yeah. Yeah. So I wonder if we'll get any more information on how that happens so is there because i know rj you're big into the books and stuff is there anything that's ever said about tatooine and in the water situation it's mentioned once or twice yeah. but nothing nothing about what happened or anything like that i know in the plagueis book which mm-hmm. i'm re-listening to again oh that's a good one yeah it is they talk about tatooine and everything and they said that it was devastated by an eco by a um eco disaster and that's all they say Okay. But how it was covered in water at one time, and that's the end of it. Yeah, maybe it's two raging suns. I mean, with two fiery suns burning up, sooner or later the water's oh, yeah. gonna go. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. one no solar problem. flare and boop, yeah. <laughs> everything's evaporated. Yeah, uh, let's see. Oh, Ed, uh, that's a good point. Maybe the second sun wasn't there, but all of a sudden, like, drifted into <laughs> orbit or something. <laughs> yeah. Ed said that it, it was Star done Wars, not yeah, who knows. R- Rakatic or Ratak or whatever. I can't even talk right now. Uh, so that Knights of the Old Republic uh, talks about when it happens. So, hmm. Well, maybe something to investigate and find out a little bit more. Who's about. Rakata? I don't see. I'm not a Knights of the Old Republic guy. I, I know some of you guys have played it and, and uh, are familiar Ooh. with that media. So, you know, if you dig deep enough, you'll, you'll find the, de- oh, yeah, definitely a great game from what I've heard. Uh, you'll find a strand that leads to this story. And that's, and that's one of the good things we saw with Mando. You're seeing the book of Boba Fett is they're pulling those things from those other books that we thought were, you know, no longer part of the canon or whatever. And they're pulling those strands back and filling out. Cause there's a lot of great stories that have happened over the years. Yeah. Um, you know, a we, lot and of we're great. learning so much more about the backstories of a lot of different the creatures like we're learning that there's different colors if you don't read the books as much yeah. the colors the different species the different clans the different worlds that we didn't even know about rancors feel depression 
Right. <laughs> Who knew? <laughs> hey, wait, that's episode three. Wait, 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 hey, wait, James. Don't open oh, that. Sorry, door. sorry. <laughs> but, you know, and Shaz has a good point because he said, you know, Filoni, it's a Filoni syndrome because he knows all those connections because he's aware of all that media. So he's bringing it all in, you know, because he's a fan, just like you guys. I think Jay may have said it. He's a fan and you can see it. So I feel like that cat dropped out of school and just studied Star Wars his whole <laughs> life. Like that's all he's ever done. Like he doesn't even know about other stuff. He probably doesn't know how to put gas in a car. He just knows Star Wars and, and cool cowboy hats. That's, that's right. And, and we love him for it. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Somebody had to he, do it. <laughs> he knows how many like missile batteries are on a, a Star Destroyer, but can't fill his gas tank. <laughs> yes, that's for sure. Yeah, Shaz says, and he also likes the Pittsburgh Steelers. That's too. No one's perfect. <laughs> yeah, you know, no, no one's perfect. <laughs> oh, oh, any other thoughts on episode one? For we kind of, I know we've already spent some time in episode two with some of our oh, comments. Yeah. I thought we went to episode two. I don't we know. Did, <laughs> I pulled you back. I pulled you back. I got a question. Why yeah. are the Gamorreans so skinny? Yeah, man, that's uh, I think it's plagued everybody. It's blowing up the internet. See, I, they're well, interesting. Obviously, you could tell by Ben Fortuna that he was eating all the food. So the Gamorreans <laughs> were going hungry, you know. <laughs> <laughs> the skinny pig guards diet, they're on a diet. I think you're right. Bib was oh, maybe those fluffy off. diapers just made them look fat. Yeah. <laughs> they don't look right skinny though. They just no. don't. I look at them and they're like, yeah, it, it looks like a bad muscle. Like somebody spent too much time in the gym, kind of guy <laughs> picks things up and puts things down. Too much bulk and not enough definition. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Story of my life. <laughs> but I, I will admit, uh, although I was kind of like, I felt like that too. I've grown fond of those guys. Yeah. They're just loyal. <laughs> they're like loyal pit bulls. I like. <laughs> loyal I like people. watching them walk into town with them, and they were like, one has a helmet on. They're all like, like with their chest out like look at me i'm you know <laughs> i'm a boba fan. the other ones probably couldn't walk in the city so because <laughs> they were too big so but they're always a day late to everything oh yeah there's no they're, doubt true. they're not on time for nothing <laughs> and then when they did show up to fight they got their asses handed to them <laughs> they got their ass handed to them uh, <laughs> yeah, they, they definitely uh, it's good to see them but we, they need a little more meat on their bones but then they'd be really late they'd never be there so <laughs> No. Well, just like when Boba Fett is sitting there and they have the shield guys around them all yeah. being, you know, what they are, assassins or whatever. The nightmen. It takes a little while for one of them to actually get into the fight like, hey, look at me. I could help you out now. <laughs> You're supposed to be backing them up and, you know. They're trying to get the right strategy to come in. It was like yeah. a Bruce Lee Kung Fu fight. Like they were waiting for, for the <laughs> guy he was fighting to fall down before they would come in and start fighting. Yeah. You know? <laughs> right. You see him like surrounded Boba Fett. With their backs the, to him. The, like, right. the, like the guys with the shields had their backs to the Gamorrean guards. They could have just killed them all. Yeah. Right. And they nothing i'm like uh and then all of a sudden one falls out of the world like Ooh, and i'm like all right at least they're getting like they had an extra drink after those guys left the yeah. bar before they came out or something <laughs> yeah things kind of disappeared i guess we'll hold back here for a minute so <laughs> oh man uh, so as we slide into to episode two you know as jim alluded to the the assassins that were the shields uh, I guess they were called the Night Winds or something like that. You know, it opens up with, you know, him kind of letting uh, Boba have a little, uh, t- uh, taking a stab at him by, by saying Ichuda. You know, I guess that's, you know, some foul language in the Star Wars word with Dank Ferrick or whatever, <laughs> which keeps showing up in this this uh, Disney era stuff. Uh, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> what did you think about, um, I guess, the twins, man, getting to meet the the Hut twins. What did you think about that when you I thought they started were awesome. hearing the pounding drums? Yeah. I I loved them, and uh, I I we were, me, me and my wife were having a debate on whether they were conjoint or just snuggled a lot. <laughs> me and my wife were too, Jay. She's like, are they stuck <laughs> together? I'm like, no, they're different colors. I'm like, because they have their tails sw- swirled around each other, so I think they're just snuggling. They're snuggling or yeah, conjoined I, twins. I paused. I paused the scene when they're in front of Boba Fett's palace trying to see that very thing because I thought, gosh, they look like they're together. 
I love this that we're talking about them snuggling. <laughs> this is so good. <laughs> Conjoined or snuggle? They're just snuggling. They're just snuggling. I think they're just snuggling like they're really close, you know? Oh. That's that's got to be a sight to see those two snuggling. I mean, <laughs> God. I think it was. I'd rather uh, have bragging. What about those poor guys snuggle huts? <laughs> Yeah, what about those poor guys carrying them around? That's what I yes, was the, you in see the first scene. It looks like one kind of buckles. I'm going, yeah, but you see a few shaky knees. Like they're really one goes, they all down. Go. <laughs> Can we please set you down while we're having this conversation? Yeah, the drum we guys have like, to hold you goodness. this whole time? <laughs> you guys talk so much. <laughs> Snuggles yeah, let's let's go. Go. That's our bed. <laughs> Snuggles the huts. <laughs> It's funny. Oh, man. Hey, did you guys see this? Uh, uh, Shaz Bazaar said, um, do you think Boba's going to stick with uh, being a crime lord? I want to talk about that just for a second. Just because if you really think about the way Filoni writes, like think about Rebels. Like when Rebels first came out, I'm thinking Rebels is going to be on uh, that one planet the whole time. And then all of a sudden it got so much huger, yeah. so much bigger. And I think that's going to happen here. I don't think that Fett is going to stay a crime lord. I, I think there's going to be a thing with the Pike. That, oh, yeah. That, that there's going to be like, and, and he's got something going on with the Pike, obviously, from episode three, which I won't jump ahead to episode three again, Lucas. <laughs> well, we see, sorry. we see his interaction with him in two, with the train. So. Yeah. But there was that, there's, there's something going on. You know, and there was something going on all, and I think that's where it's going to take it. Yeah, I, I think it's going to go somewhere else. I think he's going to get into the either revenge or bounty hunting gig again, and I even think it might circle back around to Mando. Yeah, we'll see. I, I mean, I'm sure they're going to tie the pieces together. There's no doubt about that. Um, yeah, <laughs> and the child. Think about it this way: there's the child still out there too. Right. right. Yeah. That's just not going to go away because Luke Skywalker showed up, right? I mean, yeah. There's got to be more about that. Oh, yeah. Maybe he has to show up again and help with the pikes. I don't know. We'll see how that works. I don't get too, too excited. I don't, think, I don't think he's coming off at weak at all. What, what do you guys think about that? Because I have seen a few people saying that, that Boba Fett's looking weak as a crime boss. and He's in recovery. I think he's trying to find his place. Yeah, he yeah, just I got agree. there. He just showed up. You know what I yeah. mean? Well, he, but he's just different but guy. just by walking into the place they're like i'm gonna stay away from that hut castle because damn boba fett's in there his yeah. reputation alone uh, represents toughness you know i don't think he's coming off as as soft he, he's well, gonna like, you're in the belly of this beast for a while the only yeah. thing keeping you alive is your armor yeah and yeah. I mean, there's got to be some physical real physical pain even though it's not eating you or digesting you, you're still, there's got to be some body, you know, aches and pains from that. And when he gets out, you could tell he's already exhausted. Oh, yeah. And I mean, he, he's still in recovery when he goes into the hut. I mean, he, it's not too far ahead from when he got out of the pit. He's yeah. still in recovery. That's why he's in the tank. And that's well, why it's about he's five still, years, isn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah because about. the Mando is five to six years after return, and this is right. obviously after that. So at least the present day timeline is so. Yeah, and I don't yeah. know if him being weak, and I'm I'm not saying as a leader, but physically, you can tell he's not. You know, the Boba Fett we grew up with. This is the baddest dude in the galaxy. He's not there yet. I mean, mm -hmm. he, as soon as that street fight. They had to take him out. He's got to get right back in the back to tank. They've got to, you know, and in that scene, you know, he gets knocked down. Of course, he does shoot that other flamethrower torch that guy. But I, I think it's coming. And that's what keeps me coming back for more. I'm ready to see how he's going to develop because he's not the Boba Fett we built up in our minds, you know, because we didn't know anything about it. Jaime, we'll see you, buddy. Jaime's got a split. It's good to see you. Yeah, Jaime. have a great Jaime. night, Jaime. See you, Jaime. Bill, I, I see what you're saying, and I, I think definitely physically he's not up to par yet, hence the back to tank and all this. But, guys, I think he's a different person. I mean, I don't want to play yeah. too much into the, the literal images here or whatever we see. The, but, I mean, I, 
I really see when he comes out of the pit, it's, it's kind of like a, a rebirth, rebirth or something. Yeah. Because yeah. he, he goes to the Tuscans, he, he learns a whole new way of life. I mean, that punk kid from Camino, you know, if he still had that mentality when Fennec Shan is like telling all this stuff where he's saying, oh, don't you think that was heavy handed or yeah, why don't you go ahead and blast him? You know, he's not, he's going to be just like she is, but he's, he's, he's a different person. And, you know, the, the emergence from the, the Sarlacc pit is kind of an allusion to that. So, yeah, he's going to get like back getting physically. On board, getting on board with, like, helping Mando with the child yeah. just because. Yeah, he would have done that. Yeah, asking for his armor back instead he, of just trying to trying to fight right off the bat. Yeah, he's a different guy. Now, but, Grant, I, do I think, wonder... I think he, they're going to turn that around. I mean, I really think he's about to go to war with the Pike. Yeah, yeah, because the Pike, there's, there's he's, he's about there. to show that he's still. Yeah. Over. I'm thinking that maybe the um, Tuscans come to his rescue a little bit as his little army. Yeah, and help I thought that too. Out, like, Have you seen episode the, three yet, Jim? No. Oh, man, we're going to get spoilers here in a minute, Jim. I know. Oh, man. That's why I'm here. Okay. That's why I'm here. But okay. I, I already know there's spoilers. But I, I hey, but you're, you're uh, you know, the way you talked, I feel like you almost felt like you'd seen it because. By the end of episode three, he's like, okay, they want a war. Let's go. And I thought, okay, oh, man, he's fixing okay. a rally to test him. He's but he half. also said a little something that made me think he hasn't seen episode three. Oh, okay. All right. So we'll, we'll unveil well, that. It's okay to ruin it for me because that's why I'm on here. I knew it was going to be a spoiler. I just didn't have a chance to watch it. It's not a big deal because I can watch Star Wars 150 times. Oh, and it yep. doesn't matter to me. For sure. So... <laughs> Well, you know, so let's let's kind of go back around. So we have the appearance of the twins, but then we get to see uh, Black Chrysanthemum. Holy moly! I knew I screamed. I yelled. I was psyched because I've seen him in the comics, and I hadn't seen him at all. Gnarly creature. When it 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 pans to the back, and you see the back of him walking up the alley, is like, who is this dude? And you see it's a Wookiee. I'm like, oh. I lost it, man. It was now it was that phenomenal. has to be a black series. Yes, that and two yes. Tuscans on a speeder. And you know he doesn't like Fett because Fett was sporting all these Wookie beads. Mm-hmm. And, you yeah. know he's getting Wookie pelts as tribute. You know he's not digging him. Oh. He hunted a lot of Wookie back in the day. So, oh, David said because I know David's into the custom. He said he ordered a custom of him today. Oh man, oh. I don't doubt it, man. Oh. I don't blame you. If they don't make one, I'll be doing the same because that. Oh, they're for sure going to make that figure. Oh, yeah. I mean, you, they're just not not smart people at Hasbro if that doesn't come out soon. Well, they'll make it and we'll get it in two years. So we'll see how this goes. <laughs> so. See, I think Hasbro needs to sit in in some of these conversations and be like, hey, that's a good idea. Let's write that down. Yeah. Instead yeah. of making another Kylo Ren for the 150th time. <laughs> Yeah, you get 13 Kylo Rens, but not a single, like, uh, Grand Inquisitor. Right. Yeah. Grand Inquisitor yeah. would be an amazing Black Series figure. Yeah, I, I can't believe I haven't done one. I know they did a three and three quarter, but, yeah. We can we talk need, all day about that stuff. We need another We'll point. have to have a whole separate one on figures that should be made. That's right. <laughs> Shaz is saying, I like the way Jay thinks. <laughs> Thanks, man. Thank you. Oh, so, so – those who have read outside I, I did some background stuff after seeing this awesome wookie but no jay you said you spent some time in the comics so you already knew who he was yeah he's been in comics for a while yeah so is it my understanding so he's had time uh with vader he's had time with doc dr uh, alpha afra, afra. Yep. um he's you know been a gladiator um i mean he's actually worked with bubba fett too as well hadn't he yep so this guy's got quite the resume and even fought Obi Wan and has fought Chewbacca as well, according to the books and the comics. So when we were watching it, my wife saw it. And she's like, "Is Chewbacca a bad guy now?" <laughs> Woman, just, just be quiet. Just, <laughs> just be quiet. Just be quiet. I was trying to explain that there's a whole, you know, species of these guys. There's a race of them, you know. <laughs> yeah. That's what and she keeps calling. Them the, the, there's another Chewbacca. I'm like, they're called Wookies, and she's like. Well, Chewbacca's a name. There's only one. Explain all this. It's a, t- it's a 28 minute episode, woman. <laughs> just, just oh my God. The holiday special. <laughs> I'm just happy she's watching it with me willingly. <laughs> yes. 
Had and she, even, she wanted to watch The Mandalorian, so we started rewatching that. Yeah. Hey, my <laughs> wife is texting me at work, and she's like, can you come home early so we can watch the, the book, <laughs> book of Boba Fett? <laughs> yes, I can. I'm on my way. <laughs> Oh, my wife, I love her to death. She says, "Is your Star Wars your, show on tonight?" Is your Star Wars? Your yes, Star. Not. Oh my goodness! <laughs> oh, so this, this is wonderful. We've got snuggling huts. We've got <laughs> snuggle the hut. I mean, that, I think that's going to be a thing. Yes. <laughs> oh, black black chrysanthemum. I want to say chrysanthemum, but I know yeah, that's it makes not you correct. feel like he's a flower. <laughs> yeah, named after he's a flower. not a flower. He's not a flower. <laughs> No. Nope. Oh. All right. So we, we get Black Chrysanthemum. Chrysanthemum. I'm going to say it again. Chrysanthemum. He shows up. We get the, the snuggling huts. Um, they leave the scene. And then we get to Flashback City again. And whoa, dude, that is some best action sequences I've seen in Star Wars in a long time. Yep. Man, what did y'all think about the train stuff, man? That was just, well, first off, it reminded me a lot of Solo. Yep, you know, there yeah. There was a train yeah. job on Solo. And that, that was pretty awesome, too. But this one had way more of a wild, wild west feel to it. Yep. Yeah. Uh, it's, I, mean, I mean, they're racing up on speeder bikes. Yeah. <laughs> modern yeah. horses. That's right. Well, the, the whole Boba Fett teaching them how to ride the speeder bikes was hilarious. Oh, that was hilarious. <laughs> he <laughs> he was, fell off. And got you think the guy's going to slide forward and he just goes backwards? <laughs> I got to uh, tell you guys a story about that real quick. Okay. Just yeah. because of the whole speeder bike thing. Um, my new job, I'm around cars a lot and different types of cars and different types of motorcycles, so on and so forth. Well, a new Harley Davidson out is an electric bike. Oh. Doesn't make any noise. Yes. It's just like a Tesla where you put it in gear and it goes. You can't hear it go because it's silent. Mm -hmm. Well, one of the guys at the big auction I'm at, a Harley comes in, one of the new electric Harleys, he hops on and he's like, woohoo, like, take pictures of me because this is a, you know, looks badass. Well, he puts it in gear, he didn't know it, and he takes off across the, the whole entire lot. Wow! He didn't even know. He's like, oh my God, what's going on? Because he forgot that once it's electric, you put it, in gear, it doesn't make noise. It just goes, you know. Oh my so goodness. I thought I when I seen that I laughed inside because I thought of him on that bike is the same as the Tuscan Raider on the speeder going backwards. <laughs> so this guy's crashing on a motorcycle and the last thing he sees is you laughing at <laughs> I mean Harleys are supposed to probably be a lot of people were laughing, but yeah, uh, quiet Harleys and electric Harleys, that seems blasphemous that's right I was, that's a good word <laughs> for a jury. i agree i agree and it, it, i i will guarantee you this Backward, yeah <laughs> that it's going to not exist very long because bikers yeah, like, they're gonna sell like four of those yeah <laughs> bikers have a hard time surviving on that expressways because idiots don't pay attention you don't want to be and, quiet yeah. <laughs> yeah. oh no yeah. and there's a I'm bike sneak up on this this street full of cars Right. <laughs> oh, there's many a times that I've heard the bike before I've seen it. Oh yeah. oh yeah. So there's many a times I've accelerated on my bike because I thought some tool bag didn't see me. Right. <laughs> yeah. Or you rev it just to make a little noise. So, so Boba trains them. <laughs> you know, kind of the old, uh, you know, Mr. Miyagi of the speeder bikes, and time for the train to come. And man, he's, that is some scene, you know, and eventually, you know, the, the ninja, ninja Tuscan, the lady stunt lady, you know, gets on there. She has to take care of business so they can, uh, you know, get things taken care of. And for real that like her, her, her whole strategy for getting on is I'm going to drive directly into this train and then jump in the air just before my speeder bike explodes into it. Yes. It's awesome. It was, her, her whole her whole scene there was just crazy awesome. Then she's just walking through the train, crushing pikes and throwing them out the window. And... Right. What? Well, where do they keep the spices? They had like a whole army of pikes. It was like a lot. And one guy gets and there was one box of spice. <laughs> and then you're like, wait, wait, there's more. There's more. And then they're just popping out of every hole, shooting. And I'm like, okay. It was, it was a great scene, though. Great scene. It reminded me a lot of 
western slash you know that priest movie i don't know if you guys have seen that the train driver yes david becker the the driver oh, was the hilarious. Droid. oh that yeah, boy, that droid was cool. droid. like a spider droid once he got out of the I love it because it just was like later. <laughs> well, the thing's going 100 miles, 180 miles an hour, and was good. Like just jumped up and <laughs> like I'm going home. Uh, yeah, that's exactly it. So, so you know, they finally get the train stopped, and you know, got the pikes all lined out there. And uh, well, I know some of you, um, you know, follow the Clone Wars and all that stuff. Were you taken back by, I guess, the difference in the way the pikes looked? Because honestly, when I saw Solo, I didn't pick up that those those guys were pikes in Solo. And I put the pieces together, obviously, from Book of Boba Fett. But, you know, in the on the Clone Wars, they look quite a bit different. Um, what did you guys think about that? Or, or did you? <laughs> it, didn't, it didn't bother me any. It really bothered my oldest son. He was okay. like how did the helmets from solo fit on these guys oh. now they have and i'm like i, I don't know i can't it, it's a different kind of pike uh, yeah it's a different kind of pike i don't yeah. know <laughs> yeah there's was... a fish called pike they look different too i don't know yeah shaz is like it didn't look like the ones in season six yeah they, i mean and i guess we see too they kind of got this fish face feature deal which we never really see i guess i, I don't remember actually from uh uh, the animated stuff but um, but did, it didn't it not fit the voice did not fit what the guy looked like you thought it was going to be like this bubbly fishy voice and he's like hello yeah i'm a pike master guy uh what are kinda, you going to kill us <laughs> we kind of you know maybe it's like a refined like, dude maybe a little pike. bit more into uh episode three but um he kind of reminded me of the what is it the, the nemodians you know the chancellor and not, not the chancellor but the Oh, the guys from episode one, you know. The Nymodians, yeah. Nymodians, yeah, that's right. Newt Gunray and... Newt, yes. Uh, Viceroy, all those guys. Yeah, reminded me kind of them. <laughs> it looked like what catfish, as said. So. What it made me think of was Hellboy, the fish dude that lived in the tank. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, uh -huh. that fine, refined voice. I'm like, that's a ripoff. <laughs> <laughs> Sapien? Was his name Sapien? Yeah, Sa Abraham Sapien. Sapien. Abraham Sapien, right. yeah. Abraham, yeah yeah so so get the pikes you know he obviously he he wins the favor of uh the tribal leader they go back to the tent you know he finds out oh i got a gift for you <laughs> a little lizard he's like oh it's a lizard I and, think he, I and he tries to play it. it off too he's like thank you <laughs> he doesn't say i think i swallowed the little bugger <laughs> yeah, yeah. like he felt bad yeah that was funny because the way he acted about that Oh, it's a lizard. Like I expected, like a weapon or something green. I right. get like, a yeah. lizard. I'm sorry. I think I swallowed it. <laughs> you know, he was trying to play it off. Oh, nice. Everything's cool though. Can I get a drink? Can I get a water egg or something? <laughs> something. <laughs> then, then he goes on much like what we would say a Native American vision quest. You know, An acid trip <laughs> Man, or acid trip, whatever you want to call that it. Lizard hits hard. <laughs> It's like it's like their version of peyote, you know. Right. <laughs> Drink the water to go find his spirit stick. In. <laughs> That's right. He ends up in the tree and having all these tripping out and all this different stuff. But that's where he finds his stick for the gaffy stick, I guess. So uh, makes makes the journey back. And then you know, as you guys are talking earlier, it was really cool seeing him kind of forge his own. Uh, gaffy stick so uh, kind of a rite of passage and um, going in the and tent the whole time, and then they dress him up like a real Tuscan you know yeah <laughs> Comes that, was out a cool, all, that was a good scene I liked all that stuff yeah that was that was pretty cool uh, I like how that kind because of, that's kind of where it, that that episode kind of wrapped up there didn't it or did it go back mm. yeah it all kind of bleeds together after you watch them multiple times so <laughs> Uh, any other parting shots on episode two? I know we're kind of rocking and rolling, trying to catch up to speed here. Any other thoughts from the pikes to the... Oh, I got something. Oh, yeah. What's that? All right. The band in the, the bar that he goes to, the oh, mayor. Yeah. Okay. When he goes there, the, the band in there is... It looks a lot like the Cantina band from episode, you know, oh, three yeah. or 
New four. Hope. Yeah, right. four. Sorry. Oh, Max Rebo. Rebo. Yeah. Now, did he get a new gig and just now he's at this bar? You know, is that like he left the band and went to a different band? Well, everybody well, might wondering. be the only survived. one that lived, man. They were all on the sail barge. So. Yeah, Max Rebo was on the sail barge. Well, so that was Buddy Fortuna. So they all figured their way out, I guess. <laughs> right. Well, that's what I was wondering because I thought they all, you know, went down with the ship kind of thing. Right. Maybe yeah. his little piano is like a protective device too. The cat can jump Ooh. down in it and shut it like uh <laughs> like like baby Yoda's thing, you know. I don't know. Oh, yeah. so <laughs> from, you know, it's a canister that makes music. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> like Shad says his, his, his keyboard survey. kinda hovers, so he just kinda hovered out of the sail bars before it blew up. <laughs> Kicked it in high gear and said Whoo! Ah, yeah, keyboard hovers. Yeah, he might have so. just driven it right home and been like, I was never at that sail barge, man. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> all the other band members. I gone. called in sick that day. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> only, only one of the, what, what are the other guys called? The, uh, something Dan? I can't remember their names, but, uh, uh, you know, they. Slice Newtless and the Max Rebo band. Yeah. So Slice, <laughs> Slice done for. And then, uh, <laughs> some of the other music instruments, except our, oh, Dan, yeah. And the, I don't know. That's right, Chaz. I knew you'd know that, brother. So, yeah. So they're they're playing Dan and the. What is what is the bar called? Is it called Sanctuary or something like that? The girl from Paradise. Flash Dance is the head thing. What's that? <laughs> That's a girl from Flash Dance. She's like sixty years old. Yeah. Yeah. What's the bar called? Did you, did you say, Bill? I thought was it Paradise or Sanctuary? Paradise. Or? Yeah, that's it. I think it's Paradise. Yeah. Yeah, Sanctuary, that's the name of one of the episodes of Mandalorian. So sorry. <laughs> it's, getting, it's all bleeding together. It's all bleeding together. It's all bleeding together. All right. The name of the weed dispensary, like a block from my house, too. Oh, okay. Well, that's up. <laughs> <laughs> Can't believe well, Massachusetts is so uptight, but they let you sell weed. <laughs> well, uh, well, Chicago's the same way. Hey, man, how did your mayor keep getting elected? How's <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Oh, I forgot work? about Tashi Station was in this episode, too. So we had Tashi <laughs> Station and uh, a couple other throwbacks to <laughs> episode four. So. so I had to get off the mayor comment. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I didn't. I didn't mean anything by it. It's just, yeah. I mean, <laughs> inquiring minds. One of those. Nancy bad. Pelosi represents Massachusetts, so it's not like I can talk anything. But... <laughs> <laughs> uh. So we roll into episode three. Okay. So that's the one that dropped uh, a couple of days ago. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, didn't mean <laughs> I try. I thought I was going to keep it together. Oh, <laughs> so we roll into episode three. Uh, I don't even remember where, where it starts at. Uh, where, where do we start at in episode three? What, where, where does it open up with? Uh, uh, the Bantha bore, tank, right? That and then, Mar uh, monk thing, spider crawl. Oh across. yeah, 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 yeah. You got the spider monk uh, coming across, and they're hanging out there. And uh, uh, eight D eight is kind of giving the debrief. Um, there was a throwback to the beginning of Return of the Jedi with the little frog thing that yeah, tongue slaps a bird. Yeah, I like the I like that it gave a little bit of background on most Espa, the breakdowns of everything. I thought that was really cool. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't know what you guys thought, but I thought the gang of kids with the colored motorbikes, it just didn't fit. No. That was, I thought if they'd have just left them, you know, I don't know. It just, well, yeah. I'm with you. That Bill, was a back now. to the future too vibe. Yeah. <laughs> like like yeah. 47 mirrors on it. I really I mean, thought they should have called it. It was this. like a walker. It's like an, an old man's walker. They should have called this episode Vespas and Espa. That's what they should have called it. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I mean, it was. I was just like, really. Uh, I mean, so much. There was a lot of goodness in this episode, but I was just like, like you guys, Back to the Future Two. I was even thinking Spy Kids. You know, some <laughs> of the special effects with the speed. And those dudes are going to. Where did they get the paint? They're Nothing else is painted those colors. <laughs> yes. Nothing else. Yeah. yeah. If all the houses were painted pastels like Florida, I would see that. But yeah. <laughs> Everything's got kind of colors tan. Star Wars. And I what know. gang of kids is going to have? They're going to. They're not going to paint them that color. Just that just didn't fit with me. No. no. Yeah, they're was... just hanging around outside, just to the right of the door where they they just stole all the water from. 
<laughs> Shad, like, Shad said. Wouldn't you go somewhere further away? I mean, when I commit breaking and enteries and things like that, I leave the scene of the crime. I don't hang out outside the door. <laughs> Shad says they were know, so It just out. didn't fit. The whole thing didn't 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 Shad vibe, said they were right? so tricked out. They must have cost a lot of money. That's they should have saved their money for water instead of complaining about the cost of the water. Sitting around smoking death sticks. <laughs> death sticks and contraband water. <laughs> oh, barrel. <sighs> but we're not touching on the good. Oh, well, that's true. Ride a Bill, Bill took us to it. Bill took us to it. The I'm best sorry. Thing. I okay, just had to get that out here. because of the three episodes that I just uh, thought, this is so crazy. <laughs> It's like teenagers. Yeah. It's, like, it's like Hondas with with four thousand dollar exhaust systems on them, and yeah. yeah. So obviously we we see, uh, uh, you know, he's back in the back to tank, and I know we we're missing something here, but he's uh, back to the back to tank, and he's having flashbacks, and we see what's happened. You know, he goes and visits the Pikes, and he says he's going to deal with the motorcycle gang, and then he goes back, and obviously the camp's wasted. So uh, we didn't see the ninja, her remains. So she's probably still yeah, alive. We didn't see the little kid captive. either, man, but he threw her bantha stick onto the yeah. fire. So we're led to believe. And the little kid lead. stick too. Yeah. So we're led to believe the little one's dead because of the, the sticks in there. Maybe. And the ninja chick. He yeah. threw her yeah. weapon yeah. onto the fire. Did he throw right after Right after the mayors. Yeah. Oh, so I don't know. Man. They didn't show them. They only showed like the, the chieftain down. Yeah, that's all. Show the saw. other two. So, I feel like they would show her because she's—I mean, she's been established as a character. And yeah. the kid. Yeah, and the I kid. Feel like maybe they're captive, or they're going to be used, or something. Yeah, I'm hoping that they make it, just yeah. because. So, dude Damn, is I'll having, like he's having a nightmare, and all of a sudden that back <laughs> to tank opens. <laughs> Your sentence like. Rah! The oh, nightmare it, becomes reality. So oh I'm just dreaming. God. I'm just dreaming. And then, and I'm just going to point this out because you posed the question who would win in a fight? Oh, After yeah. that, the teeny kids that we were just tooling on whipped his ass. Oh. And don't, and he ended up down in the Rancor pit. <laughs> what about so. what about his electric brass knuckles? Oh, Did y'all see that? Oh yeah, that was so cool. So I heard that you get a lot you you get a lot of packs of cigarettes for one of those in a prison. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I heard that goes back to the books or comic Death books, sticks. doesn't it? The the brass knuckles, didn't that somebody like implant those in his hand or something? Yeah. Yeah. So but dude. You know what Fett's first thought was when he's getting snatched out of that tank? Where are those damn Gamorics? <laughs> <laughs> Where are my skinny pigs? And the fight went on for a wicked long time before they showed up, too. So it stuck with, like, the feel of the show. Dude is out in his boxer briefs getting his tail whipped. And there's no help. I think even the kids showed up before the Grimorians they did. They did. In fact, it wasn't until they whipped the Wookiee into a different room, the Grimorians were like, oh, hey. And he rode that one the more off the in, like, a side room, like, Where hanging out. skinny pigs, he thinks. <laughs> Well, and Phoenix Shands showed up late. Uh, oh, everybody. Yeah, I mean, they were hanging back, man. Everybody, yeah. It was the middle of the night, you know, so it is what it is. Yeah. So, <laughs> but no, that, I mean, the girl, she jumps in there and just runs right up to the big old beast and just stabs him in the side. No fear. So, I mean, she's loyal to, to Boba right out of the gate. She took so. a shot for it, too. She yeah, paid she the sure price. Did. Yeah. But, <laughs> you know, after he gets his butt whipped, he comes down the next – down the stairs in the next room he's got a bathrobe on and he's like oh so i'm i'm, I'm okay now so, you know uh where y'all been y'all yeah, where... <laughs> yeah one of those hits would have shattered every bone and like you know what I mean? yes. they don't yeah. make enough bantha tanks to fix that <laughs> yeah. no get the grimorian in the back to tank he should be back in it so. yeah he did he said put one of the grimorian guards in it he, he didn't even Shaz says, and no arms were removed. <laughs> so, that's so true. I have to look forward to like a little group of kids on like scooters. Oh, dude, you you don't even yeah. know. We're not doing it, Justin. Oh my god, it's going to be worse than we're even describing it. You, you may think that we're over exaggerating. <laughs> we're not. <laughs> like one of the scooters has literally like fourteen mirrors. Yeah. <laughs> 
It's the Lost it's, Boys. It's like a golf cart in a fifty-five plus place in in Tampa, Florida. It really it's is. It this guy with a saxophone screaming and singing on the thing for Lost Boys, like Lost Boys. Oh no, Lost Boys is better, much better. <laughs> I love the Lost Boys. I do too. Good. Oh, dude, you have no idea. I can't wait for you to watch it and hear your take on it. Because so. <laughs> uh, I'm my favorite, my favorite line people. besides Danny Trejo being the Rancor Keeper. How, How cool was that? that? Yeah. yeah, that was cool. Yeah. I love it when Boba Fett's talking to the one eyed guy and he says, Keep an eye on them. <laughs> and then he's like, <laughs> he says, oh, sorry. I didn't mean that. I was like, uh, why couldn't they have just left that alone? That would have been funny just hanging there like that. So. Yeah. Uh, but what this you brought it up, Bill. The you know, Danny Trio, he's the new Rancor keeper. I think there's more to that. I think, you know, it was like yeah. uh, even the way he was talking to the Rancor after uh Boba Fett yeah. left. Yeah, there's gonna be something more involved. It's a setup for the Rancor to try and eat him. Oh yeah, there's no doubt. I don't think so. I think I think that Rancor, I think that Rancor is going to be Boba Fett's mount. I think he's going to be riding that thing around. No, I'm, I'm with RJ on this. Just the way they were talking, he's like, "Oh, he'll be back," you know. Yeah, well, it was a gift from the huts. So yeah, I think there's a that last line when he said, "Oh, he'll be back." I really wasn't expecting that line. I thought that's that doesn't fit, you know. We, we uh, talked anyway. about the no, know, the Rancor's depressed. The Rancor was depressed. They said it. Oh, I'm you know, sorry. He took I forgot. the visors off. He bonded with Boba Fett, and then Boba Fett left immediately. He's the Rancor keeper. He just wants him to feel at ease. He's like, he's going to be back, buddy. But, Don't you, hurry. but here's the thing. Here's the thing, Jay. Because you brought up the, the whole, he takes the blinders off, so he sees Fett, so he's imprinted. But he already knew the other guy because he's, like, talking to him. Yeah. He's already imprinted on the other guy. Why you gotta crush my gene? Why you gotta crush my dreams, Lucas? I'm sorry, man. I, I, I want to see Boba Fett ride a rancor. <laughs> what, and how goofy is that? I want to ride him. <laughs> I was just like, oh, that sounds so stupid. <laughs> I've written oh, things hundreds a, times. If I was in, if I was Boba Fett right then, I would have wanted to ride that rancor. That's what would have been. I want to ride that rancor. I Dude. agree, absolutely. Oh, let's see, Dan jumps in. Wait, Dan, what are you thinking, bro? Thank wouldn't you, it be a lot better if he had ridden the Rancor? We wouldn't have had the scooter bike scene. It's true. <laughs> that Rancor could have just grabbed that train, shoved oh, the bikes right. right out of it. Shaz, was, Shaz remind us, remember him riding that big pink uh, water dragon in uh, the holiday special? <laughs> he even said that. He said, I've ridden, I've ridden bigger beasts. That's than right. This. So that's what he's alluding to. So. <laughs> Uh, we'll see we'll see okay so jay's saying he's riding the rancor i'm saying the rancor is going to try to kill boba so that's no, the rancor was so sad he just wants to <laughs> imprint on someone and and have a buddy he's already he was laying there depressed he needed some lorazepam uh, like I'm, a I'm giant pill of lorazepam 750 milligrams <laughs> i think it's gonna the take rancor, the rancor may eat those skinny gamorian guards that's right Thank you, David. He got the itchy spot, man. Oh, I was true. expecting the rank or foot to start doing like a thing like this. <laughs> he likes it. He I'd likes love it. to Boba Fett ride the rank or. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. You get to look to forward town. to that too, Jim. <laughs> ride him into town. Like, That's you know, you got the Boba, you got the, uh, you got the um, fatties cuddling on a, you know, a, a big block. <laughs> the snuggle of huts. Snuggle yeah, huts, yeah. Yeah. They're coming in getting with drums and stuff. <laughs> have him walk into town with the rancor you know hey look at what oh, i'm God. riding vibrating everyone's water toronto yeah, sports sure. style yeah see what's happening now parts, see how yeah. people give them respect then you know well everybody <laughs> says they didn't see him come into town because he wasn't on his litter so oh they're gonna see him coming if he gets this oh, they're gonna see him. Uh, we'll see i don't know you man take notice know. of a rancor okay okay town. just stop just think for a minute <laughs> let's say the rancor eats him he passes through his digestive system and it's like uh will ferrell in land of the lost when he's riding the dress <laughs> at the end. <laughs> that could work the best of both worlds and he comes out like ace ventura from pet detective when he's in that you know there you go <laughs> I'm, I'm going to email Filoni and tell him to write that in. <laughs> There's little kids watching the Rancor give birth to Boba Fett. Yeah, that's... Uh -huh. Oh, my stars. This is a, this is a sinking ship. <laughs> yeah, try to bring us back to your... Uh, 
Where's my agenda? From this one, Lucas. (laughs) Where's my agenda? Get back on the agenda. Uh, (laughs) So we see that a whole bunch of pikes are starting to show up. So it's going to be a war. And that's where we leave off for episode three. He's got a rancor in the in the dungeon now. He's got a war he's going to wage, and the pikes are in it. And so, all right, throw your throw your hats in the ring here. Do you think that Crimson Dawn is going to show up in this since the pikes are part of this? Yeah, and and I'm wondering if uh, Darth Maul is going to be around. I mean, Maul's, gonna, <laughs> Maul's coming there to look for. Uh... Yeah, he's already been killed once or twice, so he could show up a third. <laughs> He, he's, that not was gonna, a, he's not really session dead. day on another facebook page oh is that right yeah ladies she or some guy who it was it was a troll account i know because i went look at their page they're like what about o- will obi-wan fight him he's been dead <laughs> <laughs> follow your timelines lady. you never really you never really die in star wars <laughs> that's true jay so look at the emperor yeah, <laughs> yeah. i mean they cut maul in half somehow and somehow he attached spider legs How's that work? I don't know. I think Obi Wan finished him off last time. He cut him like a flounder. <laughs> Instead <laughs> of this way, he cut him this way. <laughs> he's, all the he's good guys with the dark back stuff. Back and all the bad guys come back as weird mechanical things like Darth Vader and Darth Maul. Right. So we have the the blue spirits just oh, and then you have the the bad guys that are like, now I'm mechanical and even more. <laughs> <bad."> <laughs> the second life is a mechanical existence, so so oh uh, so there yeah shaz is saying crimson dawn to be coming in, in the kira character you know from solo she'll show it which there has been rumors that there's also guys okay we're getting some speculation here there's also been rumors that han solo is going to show up in the season in the series what do you think I about that i think that's really going to happen and that's yeah. been popping up everywhere yeah some some de-aging stuff uh because he's supposedly filming or they was filming the new indiana jones and they've been doing de-aging stuff with that so I mean, he's already in house. Might as well just swing over to the other production studio and shoot a few few scenes. So, um, or or Lando, Chaz is saying, yeah, maybe. Uh, I think Han's probably because they did Luke for Mando, do Han for this man. It'd get the fan base going crazy again, and they know how to do that. So, we'll see. We'll see. Other thoughts about the book of Boba Fett episodes one through three before we tag into the, some of the collecting stuff i got a question for you guys uh right. i know you guys have a little bit more star wars knowledge than i do no um i love star wars but there's some guys that are a lot more diverse in the the universe now they show in the part with the bikers that uh where boba fett went and stole their bikes beat them up stole their, their speeders though they were actually at a location one of the the water uh the uh, um the farmers out there and they destroyed them and killed them and you see them and i remember when they went and seen uh you know went back to tantooine in four and they found you know it yeah. you think it might have been a pot of, of like something like that that killed his aunt and uncle well you know, his aunt and uncle in four i mean because you're right the scene looks almost spot on um you know that's most likely the stormtroopers, and that's what they say it is. Um, but yeah, I, I you definitely got flashbacks to episode four when you see that biker right. gang there punking that guy and you know painting graffiti on his building and all that stuff. So right, it yeah. just made me feel a little bit more because I would I think more like a marauding biker group would do yeah. like stormtroopers to me. I I don't know when I when they said it was stormtroopers, <laughs> I don't see stormtroopers that way. Maybe the death troopers. But I, I never would, I don't know. I, I, I haven't seen them that way. For one, they're bad shots. So there would have been a lot more holes everywhere. <laughs> but um, it just, it made me flash back to that when they're pulling them out of the, the front of the, the one building and, you know, they're burning things. And I was like, wow, it's pretty yeah, eerily definitely. similar. Yeah, there's, they've had all those little different nods, you know, throughout the series, uh, you know, throwbacks to the original and other other police, other pieces along the, the Star Wars timeline. But yeah. And, you know, even that episode, I think, uh, or maybe or maybe the other episode, maybe it was Shaz that mentioned it. You know, you go back to Tashi Station, you know, that's where he gets the bikes from. Right. Um, you know, we've got a couple of characters that are in the cutscenes from A New Hope 
uh, Cammy and uh, oh, what's the other character's name? I can't remember. I know some of you guys know it. Um, Biggs. But, uh, no, well, he was in that the deleted scene, but not in the scene in uh, what you call it in a uh, book of Boba Fett. But but yeah, it's it's good stuff for sure. I mean, I know people have got their gripes. Cammy and Fixer. That's right. Thank you, Shaz. I knew you'd know it. Um, but uh, you know, it's. I'm excited the fact that every week we can watch fresh new Star Wars. I mean, yeah, there's going to be the <laughs> the Vespas and Espa, you know, episodes every now and then. But the reality of it is, man, this is new Star Wars, and it's cool. We're learning more about Boba Fett. We're meeting new characters. I mean, dude, this this new Wookiee has just changed my life. Well, okay, that's an overstatement, but it's pretty amazing. So, so, so I'm excited, you know, to get an action figure and all this stuff. So let's build on that just for a moment. I know uh, Jay's already put his money on on which Wookiee wins, but what do you guys think? Who comes out on top, Chewbacca or Black Chrysanthemum? What do you Chrysanthemum. think? Chrysanthemum. Chrysanthemum. I'm leaning towards you that as well, RJ. As much as I love Chewies, and we're in Chewies Cantina right now. Chewies a little smaller. Chewies, but but Chewies got mad skills. All right. It's definitely Chewy. And I'm also, go I, I don't want to point it out again, but the little kids that drive the pastel colored bikes beat the crap out of chrysanthemum. So, and yeah. threw them into the, the Sarlacc pit. So, if they can do it, if, if four of those guys can do it, one Chewbacca can do it. Chewbacca's very intense with his bowcaster. So, I think I'm going to yeah. go with Chewy. All right. So, Eat we got Shaz. Shaz is saying Chewy as well, Jim. So is Ricardo. Um, you know, I think, you know, you guys correct me wrong. Granted, I just read something, you know, that they actually did fight and Chrysanthemum beat him and beat him well. Um, so I think Chrysanthemum's a stronger character, but we, we've seen the soft side of Chewie for so many movies. That's true, Dan. That maybe we're getting a little washed on that. Yeah, I mean, that's what I was He's still a Wookiee straight up, but yeah. we haven't seen Chrysanthemum's soft side like anywhere. We've just seen him as a stone cold killer. That's right. Maybe we need well, to remember. Yeah, going on what Dan just said, remember in Solo, they were throwing people yeah. down to That's Chewie, true. and Chewie yeah. was tearing them up in a pit as a punishment. That's true, and he was so, going to do that to Solo. Don't forget, yeah. Chewie actually did rip a dude's arms off. Yeah. Yes. That's true. So we need to think about that Chewie and see how he would... Okay, I got you. I'm, I feel it. I just feel like uh, chrysanthemum has got all those enhancements that maybe he might he might be able to tell them. I'm not, you know, I'm the guy that people, you know, call Chewy and all that stuff. So, you know, I'm just saying Chewy's smarter. Okay. That's possible. Shaz. Yeah. As I've got Chewbacca looking at me right here, looking at me in disgust, like I'm a cell. I hope he falls on you. wins. That reminds me one time we were doing a lunch with Chewy, Steve and I, and I had set him up like in a chair, not Steve, but Chewbacca, <laughs> set Chewbacca up in a chair between us. And we were doing, you know, whatever, selling stuff and having fun, goofing off. All of a sudden, his head just falls off. <laughs> so Steve sticks his hand up behind him and starts doing like a puppet. Like, you know, sorry. guess you had to be there, but it was hilarious. So. Yeah, exactly. Don't bring the uh, um, knuckles to a, a bowcaster fight. <laughs> and I'm gonna, and I, just I'm going to point out in the comics there was no clear decisive real winner okay so you've double checked all right all right the black k and, right. and chewy all right we'll see <laughs> Shaz says B, bk will be dehydrating the fight because he like the scooter bike gang spent all his money on attachments instead of buying <laughs> 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 That's so true. And guys, in that that scene where he and I know it's for dramatic effect, but when he pulls Boba out of the back to uh, bath or whatever, every scene he's like moving in slow motion, and it's just like, oh my goodness. But then he's you know whatever. So like, I didn't even figure it out for a while. I thought it was like a part of the flashback or sort of a dream. But then I was like, oh no, he's there <laughs> beating the bag out of this guy. Yeah, that's a way to be woken from your nightmare. Uh -huh. All right, so let's let's move into the collection. Six million credit Wookie. <laughs> yes. oh, me, six million credit Wookie. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> right on spot. Right on spot, yes. Uh, so let's let's turn the page. 
how many of you guys, uh, if you don't mind me asking, how many of you got in on the Razor Crest? So how many of you are awaiting its arrival? Any of you guys in here? This guy. Okay, Jim's in. All right. How many did you buy, Jim? <laughs> <laughs> oh, two. Because I wanted to wait for someone else to get one and then pay four times what it was cost. <laughs> <laughs> i was on the phone with lucas when that dropped yeah that's right you were yeah so it looks yeah, like I'm shaz like, I... and uh david becker are waiting as well so me and jim uh jay you got in on it no no nope. oh you didn't get on that one okay what about you i need on, on the sail barge and i said i could not let this go yeah. i can't I, I'm like, I wanted to. I kept being like i i was almost gonna <laughs> i never pull the trigger on stuff like that you know what i mean yeah i don't know why it's a pricey piece but i'm we'll see how, how it looks when it gets there i'm trying to find the right spot to put it in i'm trying to find the right clear enough landing so let's look over the other feed how many uh yeah i think everybody's joined us over here so um you know because it's going to be what 20 by 30 i think that's yeah. the size of the ship um and then not to mention you know the diorama you got to build around it so i'm just saying so it's going to take <laughs> up some space <laughs> I'm going to make my own diorama and it's just going to be a big explosion mark. Oh. <laughs> There's my <laughs> razor crest. With the slave one driving, you know, you can have yeah, a slave, the slave one fight. parked above it. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, they should. You're right, David. Oh, that's a good point. The Did, you see what now. David Becker just said? Yeah. yeah. They should have. They should have waited. So uh, now we picked well, up a couple of things. Hasbro's never been the smartest on releases, you know. Um, I remember yeah, the heck? Mandalorian um, wave came out, and I was trying to sell it before Mandalorian even was released. Oh yeah, and nobody wanted anything. They're like, "Who's this Cara Dune?" And what the? And they That's they not went true, after- Jim. I wanted it. I wanted every <laughs> oh, bit of it. <laughs> well, you're the only one. You got your taste, but. Um, like they, they would only grab Chopper. That was the only one they wanted. And I'm like, what is going on here? And then now, yeah, Car Dune is expensive. It's like release it when the stuff's coming out, not like months beforehand. And I'm sitting there going, uh, this is from the new show Mandalorian. Yeah, yeah. People, I think no. I mean, everybody was excited about it, but man, we had no clue it was going to be as good as it was. As far as the Mando. Um, so it's but i tell you what wasn't it right after they closed off um the uh razor crest funding and said okay we're and then that's when it got blown up on the show <laughs> yeah yeah the, I, the next i had buyer, was, buyer's blown. remorse i'll just be real with you when that happens <laughs> <laughs> i think i talked to you on the phone about that i was like Yes. Yeah, we just invested money into a crater now because yes. it just got blown up. Yeah. Steve Steve was having to talk me off a ledge. He was like, just think about it though. The sail barge got blown up too, and they made one of those. So it's it's okay. It's okay. And I was just like, oh man. Oh. Yeah, but you didn't invest money in the sails barge true, and then a week later <laughs> it blows up. Yeah. It was already blown up. You just wanted for nostalgia. I mean, this was live and cooking when you bought it. Yeah, it's true. And it doesn't have near, I mean, years down the line yet. And I, I still want it. Obviously, I'm excited about it. But yeah, it doesn't have quite the nostalgia that we've been tied to a sail barge. So, right. Yeah. But, but yeah, it's so yeah, the email said they're going to start shipping on the 21st. So you're to update your addresses just in case. Um, yeah, but, but it was 20 bucks in 1978. You're right, Chad. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a little different now. Uh, but I, I've got a landing spot here on the table. So, and I've got all my vintage collection, uh, um, uh, Mandalorian figure. So I'll be, I guess, opening those and stuff for the diorama. So I'm, I'm excited about that. And well, isn't yeah. the Razor Crest coming with figures? Yeah, it's coming with, uh, so you got a Mando, you got a child. I know you get what, three or yeah, four carbonite black- blocks. Don't um, you have the black Jawa too? Oh, yeah, the Jawa. You're right, guys. Yeah, that's right. The Jawa, this one's got, uh, I think this one has an egg. Or does it, is the vintage collection one, the regular one, does it have an egg? It does. No. Okay. The yeah, regular does. one does? Oh, yeah. okay. Well, maybe I, this I, one has I, an egg that's open. I don't know. Oh, I know I, there's I, something different about it. The Black Series didn't have, yeah, sorry. Okay. Yeah. The Blaster. 
Oh, the knife. Shash says the knife is special to the Razor Crest. Thanks. Okay. Yeah, so it'll be it'll be neat to see once it shows up. I wonder how big the box is going to be sitting on the front porch. I'll be like, oh wow. <laughs> Make sure I'm home yeah. that day. That's, That's going to be a great target for one of my many porch thieves around here. The porch pirates. I have to watch yep. for those guys. So, yeah, I know your neck of the woods. You probably have to worry about that a lot. So, but the heavier it is, they don't. <laughs> they go for the smaller, <laughs> runnable ones. They're not. <laughs> Oh, Shaz, you're coming to Rome, our neck of the woods, or my neck of the woods. I guess I'm the only one from Rome on this this deal. Yeah, two weeks. So I'll have to, we'll have to catch up, man. But, yeah, hopefully it doesn't come then. <laughs> so, uh, but, yeah, it's going to be. Jay, you could go to Rome and get one on the 21st. <laughs> <laughs> you already have his address. It's true. Yeah, my, have uh, address. <laughs> I don't know where mine's gone. I don't know. It's crazy. You know what? Dress up as a Wookiee. I just one. happen to have two of them, though. <laughs> <laughs> oh that's the thing okay we'll see how this works uh, oh well any other uh collecting stuff uh show up in the last couple of weeks you guys want to talk about or or anything like that or anything you know you guys are looking for or, or, well that uh, joker did show up i shared pictures with that it's real oh yeah high. yeah got you yeah that was cool. i know we talked about in our admin meeting was it last week and stuff so that was a really cool piece you got now how tall is that thing it's uh about a foot and a half okay it's a uh, sideshow piece. I didn't yeah. realize it was that tall. It, in the picture, it looked, I, I guess I just assumed it was smaller. The figure itself is about, I would say, about nine to 10 inches. And then with the um, the actual uh, base, the base is another six inches or so. It's it's pretty tall once you put everything together. Um, the figure itself is smaller than you'd normally imagine with the sideshow because their sideshow stuff are, yeah. I'm going to run out of room. I was just saying, Jim, you have quite a few sideshow pieces, don't you? Uh, yeah. I have every Joker released, I think, except okay. for two. Um, <laughs> the one bust I haven't gotten yet. And then uh, uh, there's a mask that I didn't get, but everything else I have. Gotcha. And then I have a lot, of, <clears throat> a lot of Star Wars ones, especially from Clone Wars. Okay. And uh, horror. I have... Uh, Oh, I, actually won. Well. I didn't know that. Yeah, I won Jason Voorhees. I entered a competition and I won him. Okay. Um, I got that Freddy Krueger now. That's going to be a, a nice little piece up there. Oh, that's um, right. I forgot about that. You got that in the Mike gift. Myers. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Man. Yeah, I haven't. I guess the main thing I've got recently. Oh, I've got that. Um, Where is it? I got a case for it today, but the. <clears throat> That is exclusive uh, Boba Fett uh, from Adam Bray. Oh, yeah. Man, oh, you picked that up? Yeah, nice. it's a sweet piece, man. Um, Adam was moving some things. I said, man, I'll, have, I'll take that if you're, if you're, uh, you're moving it. So and I, I ordered a case from Ian's Displays, um, and it came today. So I'm going to put it in this case and find a new home for it. Of course, now i got to create a shelf just for Boba Fett. So. Is it a plexiglass case or one of those, like, star cases? It's like a uh, custom plexiglass. It's made just for those 40th anniversary Black Series figures. Nice. Uh, yeah. I like that Astromech print he sent with it. Oh, yeah, yeah. That so was cool. I've got a, I've got a few of those, Bill. Uh, or he's probably got some more. Um, maybe I'll send you away. Because, you know, he Adam wrote, or uh, I think he, he may have done that whole book. Or at least he contributed to that whole book, you know, that... Uh, the, I think it's the ultimate Star Wars book. And those are some of the inserts that came with them. Um, mm. but yeah, yeah, he has that and the Marvel stuff and all that. And he has a lot of that stuff still in house that, you know, you could get from him. And, um, you know, he signs it and does some special artwork in it, you know, that's personalized. Yeah. I've got, I think three or four of his books, but he always sends extra stuff with it, anything he sends. So, yes, he does. Yeah, he's a good guy. Uh, let's see what we got. The vintage collection Walmart fix. Check your local stores. They're saying they're marking down the carbonized stuff. Car I ain't even seen no carbonized stuff. Oh, wow. I think this wave is what? Moff Gideon? Uh, the What trooper? The, the Shore, 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 Shore Trooper. That's what I Shore got from trooper. Jay. And then the Inferno. That's a great trooper. figure. It's what is good it? looking. What is yeah, the there's... Flame Trooper or the Inferno Trooper from Mandalorian? In What's it called? Incinerator Trooper. Incinerator Trooper, yeah. And then the Armorer. 
There's Arm. four of them in that series. I'm still looking at Lando. That's yeah, all we got. That's we've what got they're Lando, on the pegs here too. Black series and Lando vintage collection. That's all we've got too. I will. <laughs> I'm going to take pictures of my WalMarts around here, and I'm going to take pictures. <laughs> and you guys are going to puke. There's no toys in the toy section at my WalMarts. Wow. The one doesn't even carry toys. Oh my goodness. Yeah, we wow. got one around here that doesn't carry toys. Yeah. They, but they, they also don't... keep their car headlight bulbs lock and key up under lock and key and cell phone Sounds chargers under Chicago. lock and key. Sounds <laughs> like you live in Chicago, man. That's crazy. I have to wait a half an hour to get razor blades for my, oh, yep. my uh, Mach 3. <laughs> wow. That'd make a man want to stop shaving right there. So. You have to you press a button and you sit there and you wait until somebody comes over with a key to unlock it so you can have one. <clears throat> oh, goodness. Um, All right. I got to run, fellas. Five All right. But, RJ, through. man, thanks for hanging RJ. out with us. I think we're fixing to hang it up here in a moment. So thank you for your insight. So not a problem. It's good hanging out with y'all. See you next time. All right, man. Rest well, bro. Easy, RJ. Thank you. Bye. All right, guys. Well, yeah, that, I think that is. We've, we've covered a lot tonight. You know, we had a lot to catch up with the book of Boba Fett and, of course, the, the news of the Razor Crest about the ship. Um, yeah, there's not a lot of not a lot of stuff to find out in the wild. Uh, I've kind of got now where I'm checking regularly the different online places, like almost two or three times a day, their new arrival stuff, just to see if some of the things I'm looking for are starting to show up, but no go on anything. So Lucas, that Lucas, means you got to go backwards and get that vintage stuff, yo. Yeah, I know. That's the thing. You know, that's a great point, Dan, because um, of course the prices are rising on all the new stuff, you know, two, $3, but I feel like vintage prices are going down. Are you seeing the same thing, Dan? Not as much of a dip as what we're thinking. We're in a lull right yeah. now. I'm chasing coins. Okay. And I'm missing like a dozen of them, but they're all the high end ones and they're going for like 1500 bucks a coin. Ooh. And I cannot bring myself to even think yeah. of spending 50. If she found out I'd be done. Like it, that's, <laughs> it's all over. Um, and for a silver coin, I just, I can't, I can't, I just can't do it. Yeah. But um, from an investment standpoint, get on that vintage. It's not going to go any direction, but, up yeah the power of the force coin from the 80s yeah um it's it's not going down i mean if you can stock up on stuff buy the dip but i think that we're coming into a different economic situation in the next 12 to 18 months yeah um we're gonna see a little balancing i think yeah yeah i I agree i agree it's just a lull right now because uh People don't have the money to pay. Like they just, you know, they don't have it. So once, I mean, give it a give it a year, you're gonna see the prices go back up. It's the same with vintage GI Joes; they're going down too. Yeah, and you know that's the thing. I mean, just looking at lots because I look at lots, and I mean, I'm finding them pretty, pretty cheap. And uh, you know, but then you look at a new black series, you're gonna have to pay twenty five bucks. You know, it's crazy. Just wait for it to go on clearance; it'll come down. Yeah, that's true. That's true. And It'll come down. Sit back on that. If they you show up, be the first one. In. Yeah, if they it don't shows even show up, up, you're right. You know what I mean? Like they well, never you, have any to begin with. You can get them from the candy man because he's buying cases. Nope. Oh, he's no, not. not getting, I, I'm is. not getting any. I haven't gotten anything in probably six months. But, oh. And I'll tell anything. you, that hurts me as much as it does you, Jim. <laughs> well, <laughs> me too. But, <laughs> last thing I heard from Hasbro was you're probably going to be one of the last people to get it. Well, last group of people to get it as wholesalers because they um, they're not they're giving it to the the stores. If if you don't have a brick and mortar, you might as well forget it. Yeah, I quit Entertainment Earth over the Pearl Jam Funko Pop five pack. Mm-hmm. I ordered it in July. They pushed it to October. They pushed it to December. I had pre-orders sold, and now they push it to April. Wow! And I wound up, I wound up buying off eBay just to fill my orders, just to keep the customers happy. And they're still not saying they're coming. It's, it's. So I'm done with Entertainment Earth. That's what um, I'm going through. I, I, I'm with Entertainment Earth, and that's all. They're, they all, everything. 
I remember for um, I was getting a box of Boba Fett's for um, um, me. Yeah, for Dan. <laughs> Sorry, for you. This guy named Dan. <laughs> they canceled it. Yeah, they canceled it. I it used to re- see your your face, not just a little. <laughs> Sorry, I'm. My apologies. No. Oh, it's I, all uh, good, brother. No, here I am. Hello. Cool. Hey. When he says that to you, Dan, but he's not showing his face. So it's... you know what? It's all right. I'm just, I was doing some work. I was multitasking. I'm good. Oh man, I'm not showing my face because I'm running around the house and we're taking down Christmas stuff and all that. So oh uh, yes, gotcha. no, it's been it's been all right. Um, it's just that there's not a lot out there. It's uh, we're seeing. I'm seeing a ton of He-Man. Oh yeah, They're sitting on the shelf, just sitting there. It. Walmart's got them, Target's got them, they're clearancing the hell out of them. It's like, okay. I'm and not the reaction stuff. All the reactions. Yeah, the new stuff. I started buying the Play 21 stuff just so I could buy some stuff from the store. <laughs> I gotta buy something. Give me something. <laughs> wrong with that. I, I, go, I go to all these stores, I'm like, I gotta get something. It's gotta make it worth your while, yeah. <laughs> well, even so, at Kokomo Toys, if you look at their stuff, they don't have any. They usually get new stuff. They're not even putting new stuff up. They're just. It's not. Usually, you'll see them put up new cases of Marvel and stuff. No. It's a shame, but it's it is going to make uh, the smaller local toy shows a little bit more fun to go to. Oh yeah. Because you'll be hunting there. Is anybody going to ICC? I'm thinking about maybe going to one day, but I don't know if I if I'll be able to for sure. Are they even going to have it? I don't know. I mean, as much time and energy as they put into that, but, you know, you can't help but what's going on with the Omicron stuff. So, Where's David, you, David you just posted that message. Is it still on? Are we good? It's in Nashville, isn't it? Yeah, it's in Nashville. Yeah. So it shouldn't be that bad because Nashville's not like <laughs> Chicago where they shut down every five seconds. It's Yeah. I think well, Corey said he was going. Yeah, Corey's going. <laughs> I know um, Tim Chapman's going because he. I know he works it kind of as well, like um, David does. But yeah, I, I went to the first one uh, when it was uh, there in um, in the Franklin area there, uh, and it was it was awesome. I hadn't, hadn't had a chance to go back. I was hoping to go maybe at least for a day this time. So just to honestly just to catch up with some guys. Um, I mean, there's so many great great bargains there so it's it's awesome time so no are no more doing, rodeo <laughs> are we doing live sales again lucas are we picking that back up yeah so next week we hope to have our cantina sale again um and then uh, i'm going to try to do those at least once a month uh and then you know encourage folks to do some pop-up stuff and you know some claim threads like we got um but you know it's it's kind of hard if especially oh that's right the emperor will be at icc um but um yeah it's kind of hard especially i know because jim was a big part of that with all his new stuff kind of have an opportunity for folks to get hard to find things from him and everybody else so but yeah we'll we're definitely going to keep it going may not be as frequent as we had it before like every other week but definitely once a month for sure but we're hoping to do stuff every thursday night 